Hello my lovelies and welcome to another video on my channel. Thank you very much for joining me today as always. This video is going to be about creating this mani here. I was feeling some glitter vibes this morning and I just wanted to do something a little bit blingy but not too over the top blingy, just something nice and cheerful and pinky and girly and glittery. So this is what we've ended up with. You'll see I use two different techniques for this. I do some encapsulation with the larger pieces of, with the larger glitters. And then I also do some burnishing with the very fine glitter. So you'll see both of those throughout this video. In terms of what I used, my base is my NSI rubber base in opaque nude because I did want the nude showing through on some of the nails. I managed to remember to do a glitter fade on this hand and then completely forgot <laughs> when I came to this hand. So you won't see that. I do apologize for that. When I came to do my top coat, I was like, seriously, how did I forget that? But anyway, you can still see it poking through some bits of the nail, which uh, was fine. I was expecting that. So that's why I used the nudie color. I also used the clear. When I do glitter, I always put a layer of clear over the top before I top coat. So I also used my rubber base in clear for that. And of course, my top coat. In terms of the glitters, I used six glitters. These actually came in a pack of eight. I can't remember what they were called. I'll put them in the description box below. I think they were pink gold glitters or something like that. And I don't use two of them. I don't use those two. I just used these six here. So they were very pretty. All of them are loose glitters. Just come in these little pots. I didn't decant any of them. I just used them from their pots, as you will see in the video. In terms of applying those, you will need a brush to do that. I just found my oldest, scabbiest, um, most unloved brush. Sorry, brush. But uh, basically, I just use this purely for glitter. And for loose glitter, not for gel polish or anything, as you can see, the bristles are pretty hammered. But that's exactly what you want. You need a brush that is not in tip-top condition for this. So if you have your really your favourite brush, please don't use it. It's not going to be very good. Um, I also used my glitter brush, which is a gel polish brush, because I used that to put my first layer of clear over the glitter because I didn't really want to contaminate my clear gel polish. That is optional. You don't have to do that. If you have a clear that you use in just for gold for glitter only, then that would be perfect. You don't need that standalone brush. I also used two files. Oh my goodness, I must apologize ahead of time. I, I did actually, well, I thought I was filing, I was filming as I was filing the clear top coat over the glitter. I'd rearranged my desk and I'd put my my dust collector here and I actually recorded me bringing my dust collector over <laughs> instead of actually filing. And I'm so sorry, I was kicking myself when I realized I'd done that. I just can't believe it. So I am apologize, that part is missing. Um, but the files I used are a 180 and this is a very well-loved 180 as you can probably see. It's not got a lot of grit left on it, which is fine. I didn't need anything too hefty. Certainly wouldn't use anything more coarse than a 180. And my buffer. And on some of them, especially the ones that didn't have the large pieces, so this nail here and one of the others, I think this one. I literally just used the buffer. I didn't use the file at all. If you don't need to file, then don't. There's no... There's no need to, but some of these larger pieces, it's a bit hard to tell in the pot, but some of these do actually have larger pieces of glitter and they did need a file, but a very, very light file. And again, I can only apologize for not actually recording that when I thought I did. This is my plush brush, which I use to uh, remove some of the glitter, which you will see. And other than that, my oil, my nurture oil, my cuticle oil. And I think that, oh no, sorry, one more thing, palette. I use my palette as well just to decant some of that clear base there and then I could pick it up with my brush. So I did use my palette as well. So I think that's everything. Everything I've got here and I use today is actually available from NSI Australia. I do have an affiliate code with them, which I will put at the top of the screen. It is Zoe H underscore NSI in case you want to use that. That will give you 10% off your first order. And I think that's everything. Yes, as always, if I think of anything else through the video, I will mention it as we go through. Anyway, thanks very much for watching everyone and let's get into it. So this video is going to be a little bit different for me. I don't normally video me doing my base coat. 
normally by the time I start filming, I've done my base layer, I've done all my shaping and buffing, and I'm literally going in with my nail art. But because we are going to be doing encapsulated glitter, I wanted to start with a thin a base layer as possible. So where I'd normally go in and do a slightly thicker layer of the rubber base, and I would use that to give my nails a little bit of ex extra strength. I'm not going to do that today, but I do need to do some backfilling because I have removed my previous mani, but I have left my base layer there. So I file off my gel polish manis. I don't soak them off. So I'm always left with that base layer, which I either need to remove completely or I need to backfill. So I only did my nails, I think it was about 10 or 11 days ago. So I don't have that much regrowth as compared to normal. But I do still need to backfill it for this mani. But because I'm going to be doing the glitter, I don't want my nail to be too thick. I'm literally doing a very, very thin layer of this. So one thing to keep in mind if you are going to be doing encapsulated glitter is have a think about how you're going to remove the glitter at the end when, you've, when you're removing your mani. So if I was going to soak off, for example, I would actually put my glitter into my base gel layer. There's no need to do a separate base gel layer because you're going to be soaking the whole thing off anyway. So you're going to be left with no product left on your nail. You may as well put the glitter into your base layer. Because I don't soak off and I file off, I always like to make sure I have a decent layer of base coat on my nail so that when I do file off my mani, I've still got that base layer there protecting my natural nail. So if you're someone that does filing, files off your gel polish manis, but you're not overly confident with your filing, if you're new to an e-file or you're just generally not confident in filing in general, then just put a slightly thicker base layer, okay? So yes, it will make your nail a little bit thicker, but who cares really? You know, we're all learning, we're all doing, you know, getting experience and that kind of thing. And you're much better off having a slightly thicker nail than you are in filing your natural nail, either over filing it or filing down to it and causing any damage. So if you're new to filing or if you want to try filing for the first time but you're a bit nervous about it, just put a thicker base layer down and then you've got that extra bit of protection before you get to your natural nail. So just a little hint or tip there might be something that's worth a try. But yes, that's why I'm going in with such a thin layer. And it looks a little bit deceiving, this rubber base, because it is so opaque. But literally, you could put the thinnest layer on the planet down and it still looks opaque. The opacity of this gel polish is super duper impressive. It's one of the reasons I really do like it, because you don't need to apply it thickly. You can apply it as thinly as you want to and still have it do its job. But what I'm doing, because I am doing a little bit of a backfill, normally I would backfill the cuticle area and then I would work I'd walk sort of the gel down the rest of my nail I'm not doing that today I'm just literally doing the backfill and then I'm pressing quite firmly there I think I'm just putting a bit of excess on the side but I'm pressing down quite firmly to make sure I don't have any excess product going past that cuticle area and there I'm removing as much as possible and then I just do a quick check down the barrel of my nail make sure I don't have thickness anywhere that I don't want it before I freeze cure. I do tend to freeze cure when I use the rubber base gel or the equivalent of it. I just find because any gel that's a little bit thicker can have a tendency to, to run a little bit, especially when you're doing like I'm doing here, you're putting your hand on funny angles and, and moving it around to get to certain parts of your nail. If you haven't freeze cured it, then it can run across the nail. So freeze curing is literally like five to ten seconds at the most. It's just enough to hold the gel polish in place so that it doesn't run. But that's it. You know, it's it's not fully curing the polish. So please make sure you go back and fully cure it properly. But it is a very handy sort of tip to do when you're doing the multiple nails at the same time and you don't want that polish to run it's also very handy when you're doing nail art designs as well you know if you're painting flowers or something like that on multiple nails you're much better off freeze curing the nail so that as you're working you know on two or three nails down that gel polish isn't running and ruining your design you know we put a lot of time and effort into our design so 
you know, you sort of want to preserve them as much as possible and, and help yourself along the way as well. So this one I did have a little bit of lifting on that thumb side of that nail, which I think you just saw me fill in that little bit there. And otherwise they were all pretty straightforward. Thin layer, yeah, looks fine. And then that goes in the lamp. The rubber base is a 60 second cure. So it has gone in for that amount of time. So I'm just coming in with a layer of the clear at this point. Um, again, if you're going to soak off, this is not necessary. I would have just skipped that step and just put the glitter straight into your base gel. But I wanted to cure mine, as we mentioned before. So I'm just coming in with a layer of clear here. This is a very thin layer of clear. You don't need a lot of product for this. And I do not cure this. So before I forget to mention that, <laughs> um, this, is, this stays uncured until I have put the glitter on. The only exception to that is my little finger because I do burnish that glitter onto that finger, but we'll do that separately. I'm so sorry about my glasses appearing in the frame then. I don't know what happened today. I don't think I've ever done that before. I don't know how that happened. I do have a bit of a cold, so I'm sorry if I sound a bit nasally and a bit funny, uh, but that's why I do have a cold. And I think it's affected my brain, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Some really just sort of simple things today. I just like, oh my goodness, did I really do that? So yes, my apologies for that. So I did not cure that. All I did was move my wrist rest to the side and now I'm pulling my glitters down to work on them. And I really do this in a pretty haphazard manner. This is the brush that I'm going to use for these loose glitters. Oh my goodness, you really just want to find the oldest, tattiest, most abused brush that you have in your collection for this. Certainly do not be using your good brushes Glitter is very harsh on brushes and, you know, especially when you're trying to get the glitter out, they just end up a wreck, which actually makes them ideal for applying glitter. So if you have an old brush that, you know, you think, oh, this is, this is past its best, never throw them out because they, they are fantastic for nail art, whether you want to use them to place embellishments on the nail or like here, we're just mixing some glitters around the nail. They always come in handy, so yeah, never throw them out. So this is pretty random. I haven't got any rhyme nor reason as to what I'm applying where. The only thing I'm sort of sticking to in that regard is I'm applying the more chunky glitters first. So where I'm using the chunky glitters, I put them on the nail first and then I move to the finer glitters. So those two on the right, on the far right there, are the finest glitters in this collection. They're either fine or ultra fine. Uh, either way, they're just, yeah, they're, they're minuscule. So they are perfect for filling in small gaps on the nail or where you just want something as a little bit of a filler. They are ideal. And they definitely don't apply those before you apply the chunkier glitters, unless you're going to be putting an extra layer of the clear between them. So it depends on what kind of look that you're going for. But generally where you've got the chunkier glitters, I find, especially for me, I've got quite narrow nail beds. And the chunkier glitters can be a little bit more tricky to place. You've got to make sure that they're that they're complementing the natural curve of your nail. You don't want them sticking up in places. So you've got to be careful where you place them on the nail. That's not the case for the fine or the ultra fine glitters. You can literally place them anywhere and they will just sit beautifully because they're so tiny um so yeah that's that would be my only thing is to apply the chunky glitters first and then come in with the finer ones which you can see me doing here i'm just having a quick look and i figure yeah i could do with a little bit more here or there and i'm just going in and patting in those ultra fine glitters and then i'm just going to go across and try and make sure that i have laid those glitters as flat as possible against the nails so glitters have a tendency to stand up, spring up, perk up, whatever, however you want to put it. They have this habit of just standing up and not laying as flat as possible. So it's a bit hard to tell in the camera. I'm actually going around my nail and checking it from various angles to see where I've got glitters that are standing up or misbehaving. And I'm trying to make sure that they are as flat as possible. So the chunkier the glitter is, obviously the, the thicker your layer of clear over the top needs to be to fully encapsulate that glitter so the flatter it can be the thinner it can be all of those things generally means that you've got a thinner nail so 
So yep, just coming in with a little bit of a, a flattening brush here. I haven't done my ring finger still because that one is going to need to go in the lamp because I want the tacky layer of that polish. I don't want uncured gel polish. So they're all looking fine. I then pop those in the lamp and that cures for 60 seconds. Now I've got my tacky layer on my little finger and I'm coming in. So when you burnish glitter, it's really a three step process. You need to put the glitter on and press it into the nail and then burnish it. So if you start burnishing before you've fully pressed the glitter into the gel polish, you're going to cause the, the glitter to move and damage that inhibition layer. That's how you can end up with bald spots. If you've ever ended up with a bald spot on your nail when you're burnishing glitter, that is probably what has happened. So you need to press that glitter into the nail uh, really make sure it's in there firmly and then start burnishing the nail, the glitter. And then you shouldn't have any issues. If you do, if you do find that you've got a bald patch, it's easy enough to fix. Just go in with a layer of clear gel polish over the top and cure that and then repeat the process, basically burnish it again. And that will, you would never have even known that you ever had a bald spot. So it works brilliantly. Uh, just something to keep in mind if that does happen. It is a very easy fix. And I'm just coming in here with my plush brush. The plush brush is great for this because the bristles are really quite flexible. They're firmer than like a really soft brush, but they're not really hard either. So they're great for getting rid of loose glitters, which is all I'm trying to do here. So all these nails are fully cured at this point. Need to be careful with the burnished glitter because that is still quite easy to dislodge. So here I'm just getting myself organized um, and I am going to come in with a layer of the clear over the top. So I'm just using a brush that I use specifically for loose glitter. This is all I use it for because once you get loose glitter into your gel polish brush, it ain't coming out. So uh, just if you can have a standalone brush or a dedicated brush, then that is really handy. So I'm just decanting some of this. This is a reasonably new bottle of the clear so I don't really want to contaminate my bottle at this point at some point I have absolutely no doubt that I will um, but it's also the only clear I've got as well as being quite new so I'm just decanting some and I'm just putting some on my brush and going in this is a reasonable size dollop of the gel because this is the glitter that we burnished so you've got to be a little bit careful here you don't want to be dragging that brush down the nail because you might dislodge your glitter so go in with a reasonable dollop. The other nails doesn't matter so much because we literally cured the glitter into the gel polish. So it's not so important. You can drag these a little bit more, but definitely not on your um, on the burnished glitter. So we're actually going to go in with two layers of this clear. I'm just flash curing that while I put a little bit of extra onto my palette. Because often when you do glitters, especially when you use the slightly chunkier glitters, you usually end up having to do some level of filing or buffing afterwards. If you want that really perfectly smooth texture and look when you've used loose glitter, it almost always involves filing or very minimum buffing. So you do want to have a decent layer of clear over the top, which is another reason it's good to keep that base layer as um, thin as possible, because you do need to have a decent amount over the top without getting your nail too thick. I'm so sorry about my glasses. Oh my God, I can't stop staring at them. I'm so sorry, honestly. Mental note, I'll try not to do that next time. So yes, I'm just going in. This is the first layer. So I'm really just making sure that everything is covered and that's going to go in the lamp for 60 seconds. And I'm just coming in with my plush brush again, just to make sure that there is no loose glitter and everything's fine. And now I'll come in with my bottle brush, brush from the bottle. Yeah, so I'm just coming in with an extra layer just to give it a little bit of extra warmth. I don't do much with this, with this snail because it's burnished glitter and burnished glitter is basically super flat and smooth anyway really buffing is almost optional when it comes to burnished glitter but the other three nails will definitely need 
if not filing a little bit of buffing. So I do go in with a second coat and just make sure that everything is covered, everything looks fine. And so that when I do do that little bit of filing or buffing, I'm not going to take off any of that glitter. So that's really what you need to keep in mind is it needs to be thick enough that once you've done a little bit of filing or buffing, you're not going to go and cut through down to that glitter. Which again, if it does happen, similar with the burnishing, it's not the end of the world. You can just go in with another layer and a bit of extra glitter, but it's just going to take you extra time um, and effort. So if you can avoid it, then that's always handy. And yeah, just going in with my final nail, my index finger. And again, that will go in the lamp for a 60 second cure. And then once it comes out, you will need to take off the tacky layer of that gel polish. And this is where I, I think I mentioned it in my introduction, I seriously messed up. I'm so sorry, I did actually, <laughs> I thought I was filming filing and I didn't and I was so annoyed with myself when I found out that I hadn't filmed it. So I just wanted to show you a little snippet of what I was doing. Basically all I did was a little bit of buffing. All uh, Two of the nails needed buffing only which was my little finger that had the burnished glitter and I think my index finger and the other two just needed a very light touch with the file. The file I used was an old 180 grit file. You don't need anything um, too coarse. You certainly don't want anything heavier than a 180 and just take a light hand, as I said. So you don't want to be cutting through to the glitter if you can avoid it. And here we're just going in with our top coat. This is always the best bit when you've got glitter on your nails. It just looks amazing. It takes this matte sort of dull grayness to just, oh, beautiful shimmery blingy goodness I just love it this is definitely the best bit so we're just coming in with I just do the one layer of top coat if you don't have um, a clear and you didn't want to use a base coat or what have you you could always go in with top coat instead of that clear you can use your top coat as well so it just depends on what you've got in your collection just go with what you've got there's almost always something that you can use. But if it is a shiny top coat without a tacky layer, just make sure that you buff between the layers of top coat. Otherwise, your final layer of top coat will not adhere properly. But oh, just look at how that comes to life. I just love it. Oh, so gorgeous. I really did like these glitters. I hadn't used them before. I've had them in my collection for a while and I just hadn't used them. They were one of those things I popped them in the in my glitter drawer and um, yeah, I just forgot to use them. So I'm really glad I got to use them today. And I was actually planning on doing a couple more with the glitter fade, but as I said, I think this coldness has gone to my head. I finished doing the top coat and I was like, oh, I meant to do another glitter fade, but never mind. That's the thing with nail art. We can just please ourselves and go with the flow. So coming in now with a bit of a cuticle oil, don't forget your cuticle oil at the end. Make sure your top coat is fully cooled down though. Um, yeah, so leave it for a minute or two and then go in with your cuticle oil. So yes, I thought decided I need to start filming this so that um, I don't forget to mention it. So yes, very important step. So thank you all very much for watching as always. I hope this finds everybody well, keeping safe and well, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.